Hello everybody, my name is Provis and welcome to more Crusader Kings 3. There is a very special patch being released for the game today on November 24th, which introduces the Ruler Designer, the ability to create your own character from scratch and toss them into a medieval world and play to your heart's content. This is something we've been missing since CK2 and it is being reintroduced into CK3 for free, so that's exciting. In fact, it's so exciting that Paradox is sponsoring me to create this video specifically to show off the character creation feature. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and start up a new game and I'll show you how this works. First thing we have to decide is our start date, 867 or 1066. And then down in the bottom left, we can choose any character from this time period or create our own. And here we are on the world map. Now, normally what you would do is select a realm to choose a character and then play as that character. For example, the King of Italy, or if you want to zoom in a bit more, perhaps a Duke or a Count. Any of those are viable. But now you can choose a character to replace with your own. Let's say, for example, that I want to be the leader of Shelland over here, right? You're all Signer Snake in the Eye. Well, that sounds like a fun Lothbrook, but I'm not going to worry about him. We're going to replace him with our own character. And here we are in the Ruler Designer. There's a lot to look at here, but let's start with the obvious. First things first, we want to be a male or a female. Then you have to choose your sexual orientation, or simply roll the dice if you so desire. Down over here, we can take a look at our faith and culture, and of course, there are a lot of different options to choose from. Most of the time, though, you're going to want to pick a faith and a culture that makes sense for your geography so you can get along with the locals. But if you want to play as, let's say, an Iranian, Jewish, Viking in Sweden, you can absolutely do that. And one really cool feature about the faith and the culture here is you can use those to randomize various different names based around that culture, which is pretty cool. Up here in the top right, we can see our customization points. Now, there is a limit to how many points you can spend to improve the skills or the education or the traits of your character before you are no longer eligible to earn achievements in Iron Man mode, and that is 400 points. But if you don't care about achievements and you want to create an OP god among men, well then yeah, feel free to ignore this and create an absurdly good character. We can also adjust the age of our character, which you can see actually reduces the number of points we get by a huge amount, or we can make ourselves a lot younger until we become a little bobble-headed baby! <laughs> so cute! I like this, by the way. Notice that as we increase the slider, look at the face. Look how it changes in maturity, right? The baby fat goes away. That's a really cool touch. We can select our education, and of course that does cost a lot of points. We can also change up our personality. Let's say I want to be wrathful, which is really good for the Vikings. I could also be, I don't know, maybe uh, arrogant. I'm an arrogant, wrathful man. We also have other useful traits, such as perks from the different lifestyles, or inheritable perks, such as handsome, or imbecile, etc., etc. All these options here costing a lot of points, or some of them refund a lot of points if they're particularly bad. And then if you have a few extra points, you can spend them to improve various different skills. For example, I want to be really good at personal combat. I want to be absurdly good at this. But we don't care so much about learning. I am a brute of a character. Sven does not need to read books. Books are for tiny man whose skull is easily crushed. Sven know how to read the blood splatter from an axe. Learns all he needs to about life. Okay, now that we've created a pretty decent martial character, I'm going to go ahead and change the appearance, and this is where things start to get a little bit crazy. So first off, there are a lot of different ethnicities that you can choose from, and of course I'm going to be playing as Northern. And then if we customize further, there are a lot of sliders that you would expect, right? We've got our skin tone and our complexion, we've got a bunch of different sliders for, let's say, the head. And I have to say, I like that there are two different camera angles of the head, so you can see all the different impacts of your changes without having to spin your character around. That's pretty nice. But then things start to get really crazy. I mean, just take a look at facial structure, for example. There are so many sliders you can play with. So many sliders! I mean, you think I'm kidding. Take a look at something as simple as cheek fat, right? Okay, so there's some fat on this guy's cheeks, right? You can see that built up over here. But then you can change where the fat lays on your cheeks for different kinds of facial structures. Who thinks about cheek fat when they're creating a character designer? Or even just lips. I've got definition, fullness, pad size, and width just for one lip alone. I mean, good gravy paradox. You guys are really outdoing yourself with this thing. This might just be the most in-depth facial structure character designer I have ever seen in a game. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the appearance of my character Sven here. Now, one fun thing you can do, though, is also copy out the DNA of your character to your clipboard and then paste it on to new characters that you are creating. And it's going to take all the different sliders and kind of lock these in as the personalized DNA of your character. And you can share this with your friends if you 
want them to create something based off of the template of this character, whether male or female. And on top of that, because there is going to be individualized DNA for every character, then as you get married and have offspring, they will pick up different traits from both their parents, and your offspring will actually look like you and your ancestors. I mean, that's so cool! Alright, this is the character I'm going to roll with today. We've got Sven Eriksson, who is going to be the leader of Shellant. He is an absolute brute of a character. He loves to beat things up. That's how he deals with all of his problems. Let's go ahead and finalize and get started. And here we are, just like that, we are now ready to play. Let's start by getting myself married. I do think that makes a lot of sense. Ooh, we have a truth speaker, Norse. She seems pretty good, actually, already. Okay, yeah, we'll just go ahead and get married to the first woman I see, and now we have a couple more inheritable traits to pass on to my children. And let's choose our lifestyle. Now, I want to be a bit of a bruiser, right? So that means I probably want to go down the gallant route over here. Lots of personal combat ability. I will slay all my foes. Except for reasons I don't think I understand, I got five perks in stewardship. Well, that's fun. Okay. Fine, apparently I'm going to be a very good administrator. I've kind of intended Sven to be a sort of stupid character, but apparently he's going to be smart. Now Sven wants to fight. Looks like we're actually being called for an evasion of Northumberland by one of the Lothbrook brothers. So, oh, okay. Uh, well, I guess I did kind of remove one of them, so I guess we can go and assist them. Raise up the men and let's go to England. This is exciting for Sven, a chance to travel to new lands and find out how easy the Englishmen are to squish up beneath his hands. Oh, I took the Petty King's daughter as a hostage. Well, that's fun. I'm gonna make her my concubine. I mean, she's not exactly going to like me, but I'm hoping I can change her mind over time. Sure, there we go. Oh dear, we're getting engaged in combat, but honestly, Sven is so stinking good at fighting, he is destroying them. Oh my God, we can be outnumbered and still beat the snot out of these guys. Sven, look at you go. It is a good day to be Sven. All enemies fall before me. Goodness gracious me, my wife is pregnant already? Wait, how is that possible? Sven has been in the battlefield this whole time. That's eh, probably fine. Victory for the sons of Lothbrook in their invasion of Northumberland. Congratulations, and now I am horribly in debt. Oh, and Sven has a son. That's exciting. Let's go for, um, Alfir. May you grow up to be strong and wise. The real question is, did you gain any of my traits? Well, you're smart like your mother. Which I find very disappointing. I wanted to have a big, strong boy. Oh well, I'm sure he'll make a good steward somewhere. Allow me to celebrate the birth of my son with murder! Let's go fight my neighbors. Sven will lead the charge, of course. Don't run from Sven. Come back here and fight like a man. There's nothing that peeves me off more than a coward running before me. Die! Oh my god. Oh, we absolutely obliterated that poor fool. Ooh, and we get a martial perk. Finally, I can become a stalwart leader and increase my prowess. Also reduce the risk of commanding armies, so I'm not even likely to get injured. My wife was wounded? How is this possible? I actually have no idea how my, wound, my wife got wounded. I don't think I brought her into the field. Apparently I did, though. Whoops. Oh, and lovely. I managed to seduce one of the, my chiefesses. That's fun. Husband, dearest, let us name the child Sven after you. Wait, what? I have another son? Oh, I have another son. I didn't even realize you were pregnant. Okay, sure. Sven Jr. Sven Jr. is not strong. Sven is going to have to earn this name. Oh dear, and the chiefess that I accidentally seduced is also with child. Wow, I am very fertile, it turns out. Okay, grand. Well, that war was easy enough for me to win. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and create a new vassal. An unworthy challenge. At first, I thought the simple footman a fool for stepping onto the field. Then he just starts wildly flinging his weapons at me. Oh, great. Okay. Well, uh, I should probably strike you down because I don't like you. We're gonna go ahead and kill him. There we go. Sven does not accept the challenger. Anyone who threat to Sven is worthy to kill. My intelligent son has become charming. Oh, well, gosh dang it, I sort of suspect I'm gonna end up liking this child. Not only is he smarter than me, but he's even making me like him. Ah, oh, gosh dang it. Oh, I'm ill? That's not fair, you can't make me ill already? This had better just be a stupid flu or something. I've got so many health bonuses that if I die early on, that's just gonna be, well, hilarious, but also really upsetting. <laughs> Let's make myself go to war. Sven always feels better after a war. Like literally, I'm gonna send Sven straight to the battlefield to go and fight people. There we go, he beat the snot out of him. <laughs> My glory is now widely known. <laughs> and the poor fools have been utterly and totally crushed. And indeed, I am feeling better. Ah, perfect. I am so very glad to be feeling good again. Back to my normal self. Well, here's a fun little opportunity. 
My neighbor over here, and Jelen's over here, is attacking in England, which means most of their troops aren't even going to be in their territory. Which means I can now subjugate you and make myself the King of Denmark. We're going to do exactly that. Declare the war. And here come my allies with 5,000 troops. Good lord, you guys do me too much kindness. It's amazing. <laughs> okay. Oh, right. I can also buy a claim for something else. We'll worry about that another time, though. Oh, good. A martial perk. Just a little bit longer is all I need. Just need to siege down this holding, and that's 100%. You know, I could just go ahead and... And the war here, but instead I'm gonna run in here and kill some more because Spin is bloodthirsty. Oh, that's fun. I like all the mass murder. Beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and enforce our demands. Doink, you now serve me. Oh, and now I'm the head of the Norse culture. See, look how cultured I am. This is perfect. Okay, we also have some more interlopers attacking me. I didn't even notice that one. Right, let's go ahead and raise up some more armies, and we'll send them to go and fight. I'm sure we'll win. We have so much advantage. Sven's so stinking good. Get over here, you fool. Don't you run from me. A strategic impasse. Perfect timing. I'll get some extra uh, offense and avoidance for five years. I'll take even less casualties. This is about to be a stomp. Get over here, you fool. <laughs> Bring Sven more enemies to slay. Sven has not had his fill of blood. It's a slightly offensive accent, I know. It's kind of a stereotype. I apologize. I don't know any better. I'm only an American. Good lord, the Jarls are all trying to join up against me. I'm fighting pretty much all of the rest of Sweden. What are you guys doing? Who do you think you are? Is it because I took all your land and you're mad at me? Ah, that seems like you're holding a grudge. Can't imagine you do something so petty. I am known for my dedication to my faith. Well, in the sense that I like to kill things and go a raiding, if that's what was considered my faith, then so be it. Sven has never read a book in his life, so he really wouldn't know, but there we go. Enforce demands, you're gonna give me all that money. Oh, and I was able to capture the ruler of this duchy who kind of peeved me off. Fun. Um, well, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and ransom your wife back to you. You won't accept. Fine. Exchange for a favor? Eh, we'll go ahead and free her. You know what? No, I'm making her my concubine. She's mine now. <laughs> and then, as punishment, I'm going to go ahead and execute you because I don't like you. Die! There we go. That's what you get. Don't want to attack Sven. Seems like I should probably go ahead and create the Kingdom of Denmark now that I own literally all of it, right? I think so. Let's go ahead and create the title. And now I am a mighty king. King Sven! Bow before me! Oh, and good lord, France exploded. Well, geez, what the heck happened over here? That looks like prime raiding territory. At this point, Sven is literally just going on a rampage. I mean, I, I can literally just keep going to war against everybody as long as I got some faith and I've got some prestige, which up to this point has been no problem at all. And oh my god, we obliterated Lubeck! <laughs> Yeah, we're going to go on an absurd uh, conquest spree here if we want to. I can form an empire in practically no time at all with Sven. He is so mighty. Gasp. Smolland has declared war on me. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that was totally worth your effort. Okay, he's going to die. <laughs> oh, man. Why? Why? The truce hadn't even expired and you immediately decided you want to go to war with me. I don't know. Maybe he thought that he had some time. But given that I literally just kidnapped this guy's daughter, I can just end the war as is? I mean... Yeah, no, that didn't work out well for you. Guess who's coming to say hi? I literally just ended this war and the very next day declare war on him again. Because Sven doesn't care at all. Ah, uh, my son comes of age and he's actually a gray eminence. Huh, okay, well. Somebody's gonna have to unite the realm after Sven eventually dies. Wait, peasants in Lubeck? You guys chose a really bad time to rise up against your liege. <laughs> I was right next door. Wait, Holstein just broke apart and now I'm fighting against Westfallen. What the heck is happening in Europe? Everything's exploding. Oh, one of my chieftains is feeling a little bit bold. He wants to fight me. Ah, right, challenge accepted. Sure, we'll do a little practice tool. A dagger at my throat. How is this even possible? How good are you at fighting? 15? 15, you think you can beat the mighty Sven? How is this possible? No, I don't accept this. I am going to fight you. Only cowards surrender. Against all odds, I beat the snot out of him and disarm him in one swift movement. I know it was a dangerous move, but Sven doesn't care. Oh, and we can finally finish out the Gallant lifestyle tree by picking up Gallant as a trait. What does this one do for me? Well, it's very nice, actually, because I'm even buffer than before. More martial, more prowess, prestige, and attraction. 
I'm a super attractive murderous Viking. So at this point, we've only been playing for about 25 years. All wars are pretty much on autopilot. I got about 6,000 troops to my name, and I'm pretty sure I might already be one of the most powerful nations in the game. Uh, not even kidding. I mean, England's got 5,000, so they're fairly strong. Aquitaine, nowhere close. France, nowhere close. Italy, nowhere close. Bavaria, nope. Basically, England's the only nation in the game right now that can rival me. I have already reached OP-ness. <laughs> oh, Sven. Sven, you are truly a delight. Absolutely amazing. Well, guys, that's a little taste of what you can do with our character creation in CK3. In this case, I just created a military powerhouse, a true Viking where might makes right, and I just conquered my way to becoming a king. But obviously, there are a million different ways you can play the game, and so many different types of characters you can create, ranging from shrew to slightly maniacal. Whichever you want, it's your story to tell. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and a big thank you to Paris Paradox for sponsoring this video. Again, I'm really impressed by the character creation feature. It's really good. I look forward to playing with it a lot more in the future. Be sure to hit that like button if you did enjoy this video. Leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time. Alright, let's go ahead and see what